and looking at stars and, and galaxies and stuff that are all around, it seems that most of the universe, when we get out to as far as we can get, seems to be pretty the same in each place. Like you can take a cube of space or you take a sphere of space and then you can compare it to another random sphere of space, 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 um, space, 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 um, space. and they look, they're, they're very similar. Like what, what's distributed within their galaxy stars, all that stuff. They look pretty much the same. And, uh, but that's one of the things that goes against the, the, the fractal universe concept being that fractals have to be, they're not necessarily distributed the same in different areas. Like they they have to be different and certain, they have certain concentrations in different areas. Like that's one of the, the qualities of like a fractal. Um, so it's like, but again, like we like, that's just the observable universe that we're able to zoom out of. Like if we got even yeah. bigger, if we get, if we ever, if we zoomed out even further, maybe there would be, um, and, well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. And we, and the, we can, we've only, we haven't really mapped the observable. We have like an estimated range, which it could be. And I think they've only really, it's like 20% or something through that. I came across that study that I didn't, I was really hard to understand exactly what it was. It's Dude, it's really? a real it's a real big <laughs> chunk like it's a real big chunk of the of the universe. Sloan <laughs> Digital Sky Observatories where that's where they found like the background microwave radiation and stuff. Right. And it's like it's a real big chunk of the universe uh that they were able to to kind of map out uh using that and it it seems to go against like that evidence seems to support the idea that homogeneity is the is the deal of, of what the universe wants to do. Like that's what it, that's how it wants to exist. But that's not to say that there are, there are interesting little bits, like you said, of the dark matter halos, but there's also the, the existence of like the filaments uh, between these, these galaxies are like these, just these long strands of galaxies, strings, um, galaxies and stars and all these things that in between each of these large clusters where galaxies like to, to gather and, and stuff like that, super clusters and whatnot um, in between those, like we said, it's not necessarily, there are these empty spaces, but there's also these long filaments of galaxies that kind of stretch out and seem to connect them. Um, and whether or not that, I think that's where people get the idea when they look at them, like the idea of like a, a neural network of being like, oh, these all connected with the little tiny filaments and all of these things that um, th that's, you know, on the surface, they are very similar. Uh, and so, yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's, there's still a lot of stuff that we don't know, especially the dark matter stuff. Like we don't know what that is. We just kind of, you just kind of know it's there. Like it has to be there in order to, for, for math to work. <laughs> then again, uh, we talked about the idea of, of our math, our reality being colloquial, like it just works in this area of our universe. And then perhaps once you get out to a certain point, like the, our laws don't apply as much. So, so what you're telling is there's a chance we're just in fractal town. Or, or like just like universe. the, like our observable universe is in fractal town. Or like, yeah, or the laws <laughs> of gravity are a little bit looser in some other areas of the universe, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, there's the wild west of gravity town. <laughs> anywhere else, there. anywhere else you're created anywhere else. You are not portioned proportionally. <laughs> well, we talk, <laughs> you look weird. I always talk about the, the one, the, the fire upon the deep, the idea of the deep where it's like the farther you get out from the galactic or the universe center, like the farther you get out, um, you know, on these huge gigantic monumental scales, like you get all the way out here that, our our laws of thermodynamics are a little bit looser the farther you get out so it's like it, it would enable a an alien race or something to build giant supercomputers and giant you know intelligent machines or spaceships or whatever that don't exist that don't have to that aren't confined by our laws of physics like the laws of thermodynamics wouldn't necessarily apply the same to those things uh, at least that's how it work in, works in the books so it's just being like okay once you got to a certain place you can kind of play around with the laws of physics they're not they're not as uh, you beholden to you're not like, as beholden you to them <laughs> you're like, this, how but you doing once this is, but once they enter in the laws of your universe but once they once they move closer to the center like where we would be or something like that then they won't work you know, so you could get stuff that's like maybe they're so they're based on their laws right. of their location of the galaxy or universe. Yeah, and it wouldn't like so ours is different. They send a, if they sent a technology into the, the closer to the center, then that technology wouldn't work anymore because 
the laws of physics are different. So it's just like, it just, this it's stuff crossed the boundary of physics. Right. So, I mean, that's could always be a possibility. We don't know. We've never been out there. <laughs> so we wouldn't know. Yeah. I, I just want to go back to Dan's point of that. So they've identified all the stuff that doesn't seem to be repeating on a grand scale because we've, we've taken these chunks of the sky. We've analyzed them against others and it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's fractal. So in that Sloan Digital Sky Survey started as we be back in the eighties, it started and but around the early two thousands when they really started getting the data, they've cataloged a billion objects in the sky, over a thirty five percent chunk of the night sky. So I mean not not the whole thing, but pretty I mean a lot, a billion's a lot. But then at the same time, there's hundreds of billions of other things in our galaxy that we have no idea. So maybe just what the it could be because this is still early. That's what I mean. Like hundreds of years, we might look back and be like, oh, that was such like a elementary time in the research of the cosmos. They were so primitive back then. So maybe we, we've seen these billion. We've made our discovery. Think, oh, doesn't, it seems to be non-fractal. But maybe if you were to take into account the entire sky, if you could zoom out farther and gather more information. Like there is a pat, there is a pattern. Like here's the universe, right? This is if the universe is a ball. If you can get out far enough, and there's another universe, actually not that far away, just one universe space away. There's another universe, and just you go one farther. universe space away. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying if if you can if you could go out if you could go out right if you could go out and look universe. at the ball of the universe, yeah, and then there's another universe, but it's just one ball away, like this one distance away. And then you zoom out again, then you can see 10. Yeah. So I see, I've seen that Futurama that. episode that you fly to the end, and then you Just look at the other side, and it's all of us wearing cowboy hats instead. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> Anything. Infinite possibilities. <laughs> That's the universe I want to live in. <laughs> no, thanks. Sounds like Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just one province over in that reality. <laughs> <laughs> one province over. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, just one of those mind-boggling topics whereas the more you think about it you just make these like it allows you to make these weird connections um but i like i agree like zell what you're saying because my thing is i'm like if we're if you're saying if we're looking if we're not looking at the whole picture we can't say there's not a pattern because there's not a pattern in what we're looking at and what we know but if you go out like there is i would say there's just as much of a probability that in what we think is chaos is not because we just don't have enough understanding or maybe that's where our eight brains pattern recognition ends. We're just like, don't too much for us. Or maybe it's, maybe it's even far, like farther. Maybe it's uh, because we witness space in three dimensions, right? We, we can see the length and yeah. the width and the depth of stuff. And we know the, like a fourth dimension would be time. But if, if you, if you read into fractals, you come across stuff like, Fractals aren't, they're not 2D, but they're not really 3D, like a cloud. Cloud is a fractal pattern. But there's so much space between people say it's like, oh, it's an interdimensional thing. It's like a 2.3 dimensional thing because there's so much space between. It's not actually taking up the whole depth. And then if you get into, if you get into the Reddit boards, then you start going down. This is the where you, it gets good. This where this where it gets fun. <laughs> then it's, well, clouds are interdimensional. We, we just, the fractals are interdimensional shapes that transcend worlds. So is that the multiverse? We see these three dimensions, but if fractals go infinitely bigger and smaller. Do they go infinitely out beyond oh, what we can through space perceive? And time. Do they just keep going in all directions? We see the we see the three. You zoom in, you zoom out. It gets bigger, it gets smaller. It looks the same. It repeats infinitely. But then if you start go, if you can wiggle between. Right. Oh, if you have, the, if you're, you're, starting, you're about to crash my computer again. <laughs> <laughs> if you if, say you could just look between the layers, there's one, yeah. two, and three. And all between there, there's that's the rest of the dimension. That's where you go. That's where you go if you smoke a joint, and you go down the Reddit boards, and you go. Yeah, we live in a fractal universe. We have to. We're all interdimensional beings operating at different frequencies throughout the universe, and that's what aliens are in the end. Actually, they're just <laughs> different beings. The operation operating on a slightly different frequency in a slightly different inter, like dimension. And if you can harness the technology to be able to weave through them, that's all they are. And it's like, that's just how they they interconnect with us is like, they just have some sort of technology that can bridge that gap. That's it. That it no, can exist in the two fractals at once. 
no reason, no need to travel a billion light years across the galaxy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.